the creation ordinance found in Genesis 1, 27, 28, and maybe the, the next two sort of connect together, I say using transgender pronouns is a sin against image bearing. So image bearing and the creation ordinance are gonna to go together here, that um, God made you and me um, and made all of humanity binary, not non-binary, right. but right. binary, male or female in the image of God for creational purposes. And so um, what we need to see in that is that our identity, who we actually are, ontologically speaking, is a male or a female image bearer of a holy God. And that is ontological. So that will be, that was true before we were created. It is true here on earth. It will be true in eternity, mm -hmm. which in some ways is the best news for anyone who has gone uh, through any kind of uh, sex change operation has been under either the indoctrination of political ideology, which is more our young people today, or under a false application for what to do with a mental illness. You don't fix a mental illness by changing the body. That doesn't, that's the wrong part. Um, so people who have gone through this, who've been deceived by the medical uh, establishment or have been deceived by the government schools or anything else where we're getting this plug in, um, if they're Christian, the very good news, they may understand the gospel better than the rest of us because God can't be mocked in the new Jerusalem. They will be the man that they were meant to be and the woman that they were meant to be. They will be men and women of God. And so, um, and they are that attached to Netan right now if they're in, in Christ. So um, um, broad evangelicalism has decided that the Old Testament uh, is dispensable. Um, they, they don't understand the, the Bible as a unified biblical revelation. They don't, they don't believe or they don't know or they don't know what to do with this idea that the seeds of the gospel are in the garden. And you can't, you can't fudge that. You can't dodge that. And so when, um, you know, when you hear, you know, Preston Sprinkle or, you know, other others who teach false things say something like, well, you know, transgendered people are made in the image of God. Um, I mean, when you hear that's what President Biden said on his, you know, national day of transgender visibility, what that really is confusing is what image bearing means. Um, you bear, bear, I bear the image of God by growing in knowledge, righteousness, and holiness of God. Um, my knowledge, righteousness, and holiness comes from God. And I bear God's image as I grow to be more like God. Homosexuality, transgenderism, that comes from the world, the flesh, and the devil. So my image bearing is not located, my image bearing of God is not located in the, in the world, the flesh, and the devil. These are category mistakes. And so by by, by saying something like, oh, you can be a gay Christian and you can be a trans Christian or as you know, Sprinkle puts it, a trans asterisk Christian, my goodness gracious. Um, by doing all of that, you are in fact violating the creation ordinance and falsifying what it means to be an image bearer of a holy God. Now, in my denomination, when somebody, uh, when somebody is under church discipline, you don't get these wacky things that you hear today, like, well, so-and-so used an overbearing, uh, you know, a structure of government. Like, what is that? And it, what you would hear is, and it's public, you would hear the pastor say, you know, this, this person has violated the first commandment and the second commandment. You know, it would be, it would be the moral law of God that would be the measure, the measuring stick for what you've done that is in violation, not these kind of makeup things. And so, um, so to encourage someone who is already a lost person, a deceived person, to encourage someone to be even further um, antagonistic to the creation ordinance and to what it means to be an image bearer of a holy God is a sin. And so that's why I wrote those.